this is just one of the many letters I've received this weekend. For nearly 35 years, he was an invited guest in millions of homes. You've seen the films. What more is there to say? An almost overnight success at Channel 13, but it took 51 years for Marvin Zindler to reach his stride. He was born in Houston, grew up in Bel Air, a middle child of five boys who devised ways to stand out rather than blend in. He played the flute. He twirled a baton at Lamar High School. He was a feisty little boxer. His father, though, later banished Marvin from the family clothing business called Zindler's, and that would put Marvin on a different path. He went into radio, and in the 50s, he tried his hand at television. Well, tell me, is this the first time you ever had a visit to Texas or Houston? Yes, this is the first time I've ever been in Texas. After one interview with Humphrey Bogart, the manager of KPRC-TV pronounced Marvin just too ugly for the air. I've been in and out of body shops more times than a 57 Chevy. So Marvin got his nose fixed and his chin sculpted. And finally, he got a badge. He became a deputy sheriff serving fugitive warrants, working in the newly created Consumer Fraud Division. But in 1973, TV came calling again. It's illegal to operate a house of prostitution in Texas. At and my suggestion, Channel 13 took a chance on Marvin. He made an almost instant splash with the story of the chicken ranch in LaGrange and a confrontation with the sheriff there who didn't like men in white toupees asking questions. <laughs> And what about the roaches that are all over the places, all lot by the thousands? But Marvin thrived on confrontation, whether it was with the city, the federal government, or a business that took money without satisfying the customer. The Wrecker Racket ripoff continues to cost Houstonians thousands of dollars annually. And he went all around the world arranging medical missions with Houston doctors. They are going at it night and day taking care of these youngsters. To countries where heart surgery was not available. To villages where children's birth defects could be corrected by surgeons who requested only a hug for payment. Well, this man couldn't get any help from so-called charitable groups, so I called in a Marvin's angel. If Marvin couldn't help someone he thought needed help, he would find someone who could. That was the heart of Action 13. And the man with the white hair, the blue glasses, and the loud voice who reached his stride in middle age and kept on going until the very end.